And now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. I got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOP. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Well, well, well. Look at this. You know, we've had all these conversations on the air about sex in the city. And about uh, whether Sarah Jessica Parker is attractive or not. Mm -hmm. By the way, if you go to our website, blowmeuptom.com, we link you to the website. (laughs) Ah! It's called, I was just showing this around at lunch, by the way, on my cell phone. It's called uh, Sarah Jessica Parker looks like a horse.com. So if you can't remember the exact wording or the exact spellings or whatever, uh, just go to our website, blowmeuptom.com, and uh, we will link you to Sarah Jessica Parker looks like a horse.com. One of the funniest websites I've ever seen. But apparently the webmaster of Sarah Jessica Parker looks like a horse.com calls himself the actually the stable master. And his name, it says, is Wilbur. <laughs> and he's got plenty of email from people, uh, women who are very angry that somebody would make this uh, comparison. Several photographs to, to make the case. By the way, one of the emails on there was really good. Somebody said they ran into... <laughs> somebody said they ran into Sarah Jessica Parker at a Manhattan Starbucks. And they went up to her and they said... Hey, why the long face? (laughs) And if you go to our website, actually, it's our MySpace. It's myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. MySpace.com slash Tom Likas. You can see a close-up photograph of Sarah Jessica Parker's hands. They don't look like a horse. They look like a corpse. But uh, look at this story. Now, again, um, I am quoting Star Magazine, and I'm imagining that Star Magazine uh, does not want litigation. I am guessing that Star Magazine does not want to be sued. And I am guessing, I'm guessing, I could be wrong, but I'm guessing that Star Magazine wouldn't publish this, something this specific. Unless they had reason to believe it was true. I'm just guessing. Here's the story from Star Magazine. Have you seen this? And this is for all you ladies who think Sarah Jessica Parker is just beautiful and fantastic and she's got this wonderful marriage. Here it is. Sarah Jessica Parker's husband, this is according to Star Magazine, has been sneaking off for hot trysts with a stunning redhead half his age. Sources tell Star in a blockbuster exclusive. In the new issue of Star, they say on newsstands now, (laughs) we report that while the beloved actress was frantically searching for hubby Matthew Broderick one night earlier this year, he was having sex in the city with a gorgeous redhead half his age, the young woman told a friend. This again is Star magazine. I'm just quoting them here. Says here, this is what Star Magazine says, after meeting at a bar, Matthew began text messaging the 25-year-old youth counselor. (laughs) Youth counselor, I love this. 
Uh, this according to the woman's pal, says Star. Star Magazine says soon after the insider claims they began seeing each other and things got passionate quickly when they met at the Manhattan townhouse of a showbiz friend. Sources say the woman felt conflicted with her relationship with Matthew, whom she nicknamed Matty Cakes. Isn't that cute? She She tried to end it, say insiders. But that didn't happen. And over the next month, when Sarah Jessica was filming Sex and the City, the film in Los Angeles... You know they filmed it in Los Angeles? That's what Star Magazine says. Multiple eyewitnesses say they saw Matthew make late night visits to the other woman's apartment building. Really? Star Magazine says during one tryst, they arrived at her friend's apartment after a night of heavy drinking, says a source. The uh, Star Magazine uh, piece here continues. Star Magazine says she dragged Matthew into the friend's bedroom, then shut the door. A half hour later, says Star, Matthew opened the bedroom door, mumbled, well, bye, (laughs) and walked out. The friend found her passed out on the bed in her panties. Star invites you to pick up the August 4 edition of Star on sale now. (laughs) Get all the details, it says here, on the account of Broderick's secret trysts to why they ultimately split. It's all in Star magazine. Oh, you gotta love that. Now, I don't know if this is true or not. I don't know. But if the guy was married to Sarah Jessica Parker, you got to believe, you got to feel some empathy for him. You got to. You know what we all say around here? He's got to look at that naked. (laughs) Oh, yes. So uh, Star Magazine says that uh, Matthew Broderick, the husband of Sarah Jessica Parker, was having trysts. With a hot 25-year-old redhead. Now I've got to say, it doesn't matter if it's Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew Broderick or who it is. There are plenty of people out there, people you know, who love to portray that they have got the perfect life. We all know people like that, don't we? I mean, I have known people, I, I, I've known people who are married and they've got three perfect children and they've got perfect houses on the East Coast and the West Coast and they've got perfect careers and everything looks like it's just going fantastic. And then later on you find out that things are not as happy as everybody said they were. Things are not going as perfectly as everybody said they were. I learned a long time ago not to be jealous of people who appear to be happy. Because the people who stand on their heads, these are the couples now, the couples who stand on their heads telling you how perfect everything is, how perfect the other person is, how perfect their children are, these are the people who are heading for a cliff. Maybe you're one of those. Dean, of course, wanting to start trouble, mentions Jimmy Kimmel and Sarah Jessica Silverman. Another happy couple. Happy, happy, happy. Everything happy. The perfect couple. The perfect. Do you know anybody like that? The perfect couple. And do you take secret pleasure? This is only because we are miserable. We are all miserable. And uh, we wish nothing, you know, we, we love to pretend, we love to say have a nice day to people, and we love to say that's fantastic. We love telling people in our most insincere, over-the-top way, that's fantastic. We love telling people how great it is that they're so goddamn happy. And then we love seeing them fall off the banana peel, don't we? We love seeing them fall off the cliff. Here's the deal. If you're a, by the way, 
I'm not a couple. I live alone. So I, I don't hire a publicist to go out and tell People Magazine and Star and Us Weekly and Hello and OK and all these stupid magazines. I do not tell my publicist to go out and get me a bunch of stories about how I've got the perfect marriage, the perfect relationship, how we, my me and my Mrs. Me, we spend our perfect Sunday morning going to perfect restaurants, having a perfect brunch, and then we walk along the perfect beach, perfectly holding hands, and where we perfectly go on vacation to perfect villas in perfect countries together and make perfect love, drinking wine and in hot tubs, and we're all perfect. I'm anything but perfect. And it, nothing gets me more than these stories about the happy couples. I don't care if it's Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. I don't care if it's, uh, you know, remember when Britney Spears would get married and tell you how happy, happy, happy she was? And we, we all see where that went. <laughs> and you know all our reactions to that. <laughs> so anytime you uh, read about the couples who say how perfect everything is, you're just waiting for the fall. Come admit it you love it you love it whether it's famous people or your friends come on nobody's that happy right nobody's that happy and anybody who says they're happy and later on you find out they're not you gotta love it you do love it don't you don't you Tom, 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 like you. Mm, boy the Tom like it show at one 800 800 top Thank you for tuning out. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. We do. <laughs> so Star Magazine says that Matthew Broderick has been having twists behind the very skinny back of Sarah Jessica Parker. Looks like a horse.com. Go to blowmeuptop.com and get a look at that website. Have you seen that art? <laughs> picture number six is my fave. If you go to picture number six, that's the best of the group. Take a look at that. You can go right to it. Did you see it? Picture number six. Sarah Jessica Parker is a horse. It looks like a horse.com. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> the, horse the, the horse does have smaller teeth. Also looks younger. <laughs> All right, come on. When you see a couple and everybody uh, everybody thinks they're perfect. By the way, do you have a girlfriend or a wife who always throws another couple in your face? Uh, look at Brad and Jennifer. They're always so perfect. They're always so... Look, everything they do is right. They have great parties. They have perfect holiday. They have perfect children. Look at us. You ever have... The other couple thrown in your face. Steve and Melissa, they always go on great vacations. And what do we do? They're always so happy. And look at us. We never go out. We never do anything. Oh. So you love seeing those couples fall apart. Oh, my God. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Carlos on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much, Carlos. Well... Like, I was telling you, your, your screener, uh, my aunt, she was, like, you know, saying she had the perfect marriage and this and that, going to church all the time, saying, you know, God blessed her. And come comes to find out, like, 20 years later that, you know, my uncle was cheating on her. And and she was she was also cheating on him with, like, the priest, I guess. Really? I don't know if, I don't know if any of it's true, but, you know, he, my uncle actually went to one of, like, the seminars and broke it up and... Told everybody there that she was uh, she was having an affair with the priest. Wow! And, and it's just it's just t it, hypocritical, you know, because she always says, "Oh, whenever whenever you have a problem, you know, go to God." So you know, just, where was she at when this was all going on? You know what I mean? Well, that, that's a good question. Yeah, I mean, but I you know, I, these I magazines are full of stories, mostly about show business people. Yeah. And they all have the perfect relationship, and they had the perfect storybook marriage. And yeah. then they got pregnant, and they had the perfect pregnancy, followed by the perfect baby. And they oh. had the perfect honeymoon, of course. And they also have, uh, you know, a perfect house, and they allow people or In Touch magazine or one of these to come in, or In Style. They come in, and they show the perfect house with the perfect uh, interior designer. Everything perfect. 
And th- those are the ones I just love seeing fall off a cliff. I just think it's the best. Well, thank you for hanging up in the middle of my sentence, by the way. That's great. But uh, I just love seeing those ones fall. I do. one 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Here's Todd on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm okay. Um, I wanted to know what you thought about that other recent scandal hitting the news, and that's Senator John Edwards uh, supposedly having a mistress and now a love child. Now, I haven't heard the uh, love child allegation. I did hear the mistress allegation. Now, I read this in uh, on the Inquirer, the Inquirer.com, I think it is, National Inquirer. Anyway, they say that the, uh, I guess the kid is 18 months old, and I find this really amusing considering when he was uh, nominate or uh, running for the presidency that he and his wife went on uh, camera, held those press conferences talking about her cancer and how she was dying and how supportive he had been for 30 years and what a love affair that they've had. And now to find out that he's actually banging somebody in the Beverly Hills Hilton and having a love child seems kind of amusing to me. That was the allegation. And uh, by, by the way, I think I know where I heard that. Mike Walker, the gossip editor of the National Enquirer, was on the show of a friend of mine, Al Rantel, on KBC. I'll give him credit. Uh, Mike's a good friend of ours, too, and uh, yes, I, I heard it, and uh, when Mike says it, I believe it. When the yeah, Inquirer you know, says I think- it, I believe it. I, I'm, not, I'm not being facetious about that. The, the Inquirer had their day of being sued by, if I recall, Carol Burnett and Marty Ingalls way back when, and uh, the, they were on the straight and narrow. When they put a story in the Inquirer, the, they vet those stories. They do. Well, the interesting thing is they actually had the room numbers that they were staying in. They knew the name of the driver who took both the mistress and John Edwards to the hotel. And apparently when they found him uh, leaving the hotel at 2.40 in the morning or something like that, there were uh, a dozen photographers out there. And I guess he ran into a bathroom, locked himself in there, and called security. So it'll be interesting to see what his response is. (laughs) Well, I am waiting. Now, of course, now, of course, look. I know from having been in a couple and having been a public figure that many times when there are problems, well, you're not going to send out a press release. Uh, I also know there are many guys, we've done shows about this, there are guys who, quote unquote, they have clearance from the control tower. In other words, the wife says, I'm in pain, I have cancer or whatever, whatever she has, I, I can't have sex with you and so... You know, just get what you need. Just don't tell me about it or that kind of thing. So we don't even know what their arrangement is. So I guess I guess we should all hope that our wives someday get cancer so that they give us permission to go out. And well, the way you don't, about, you don't want to have you don't want to feel that way. The best way to avoid that situation is not to get married. Exactly. Thanks <laughs> a lot, Tom. Can you blow me up old school? I certainly can. one 800 800 tom That is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Tim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hey, yeah, I uh, was just leaving work and turned the radio on, and I heard this. So I just uh, had to chime in a little bit. Uh, I am, my wife and I are that couple. We are happily married, uh, and everybody's constantly, I hear them, how, well, how come we can't do what they do, and... And especially the women uh, is ragging on their men. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know what you mean. That's absolutely true. That uh, and, is... there's, and there's not a lot of us out there because everybody I see, uh, you know, they are they're ha- they say they're happily married, but I've never met their wife. Well, that's absolutely true. And uh, you know, again, I, I'm tired of hearing about all these perfect couples. And I do believe that all these magazine articles and all the celebrity publications. That's what gives women the idea to, you know, give us a punch in the ribs and say, when are you going to marry me? You know, because they want to have that perfect life, too. The perfect life that generally doesn't exist. No, in general, you're right. You're 100% right. It does not. And, and, it, and it's something hard to achieve. And I'm one of the real, I'm one of the uh, uh, against the rules, I guess how you put it. Against the rules? How so? Well, no. And, you're the exception and, you know, to the rule? The exception to the rule, right. I'm, I just happen to be lucky enough to be one so of So you jumped off the 16-story building and lived. Yes, I did. <laughs> and actually, I think it was higher than that. <laughs> so, really? So I figured I'd give a call. There, there are a few of us out there, but I, 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 
trust me, I haven't met too many of them. And I, like I said, I, uh, I'm 48 years old. Uh, I've been around the block a few times, and I have every perfect couple I've ever met is divorced. Well, uh, certainly uh, there's an awful lot of divorce out there. Uh, but uh, the, the, uh, in my history, thinking back over time, uh, the ones who are most likely to break up are the ones who spend all of their time telling you how perfect everything is. <laughs> it's the ones that look perfect. They, they, they constantly, they, they, they just look perfect for yes. the public. The more perfect the couple has looked, and this is going back over my entire adult life, uh, the more likely it has been that they broke up, or the uglier the breakup was. Oh, yes. I mean, I know. You know why I'm I'm very familiar with this, because my family was always busy trying to appear perfect. You know, uh, my father uh, essentially uh, wanted it to look like we lived in Pleasantville. If you ever saw that movie years ago, oh yes. Uh, they, 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 my 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 father wanted it to look like we, he had perfect kids and we lived on the perfect street in the perfect house. And we weren't crazy like the rest of the family. You know, like my mother's sisters and brothers and. Uh, my father's sister. We were not crazy like them. We were not sick. We were not angry and nasty and horrible like that. Of course, we had all kinds of problems. And if we tried to talk about those problems in front of anybody else, we were soundly beaten. Yeah, one, one heck of a uh, facade. Right. So that that's why I particularly enjoy seeing the other people who are doing the same thing. I know from experience... That the more you try to appear perfect, the more likely it is you are miserable. Uh, I agree with you. And uh, on top of it, uh, I don't try for a perfect marriage. I just, my wife, herself, I'm myself. I do my thing. She does her thing. And 99% of the time, we do it together. Well... I understand, Tim. Good points you make. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Rich on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How Hello. are you? I'm, do I'm doing great, Rich. Hey. Uh, you know, it's funny how you say, uh, you know, people who appear to be uh, so wonderfully happy uh, really are quite miserably sometimes. But uh, are, isn't that you, Tom? Aren't there going to be a lot of people to see maybe one day where you get caught? With mm, but I get Caught with when I got caught with what? Like an underage girl or marijuana or come on. Mm, actually, I've copped to everything on the air, including I've copped to smoking pot. I've copped to doing other drugs. I've copped to being uh, unfaithful to wives and girlfriends. I, I never portray myself as perfect. Oh, well, I mean, you, you say about, you know, having money and... Yes. Power, oh, yes, I have money. But I over the years, I've had many miserable moments, miserable marriages, miserable divorces. I have had... And I've talked about them on the air very openly. I mean, you wouldn't know about these things if you had or hadn't heard about them from me. No, that's that's quite true. I know you've you've been pretty clean with those, but... I had many years of starving and being broke and near bankruptcy and with women who treated me like crap... And so when I say I'm happy, I am happy today after years and years of trying. Well, you can always pull a Nick Nolte drunk driving or something. Come on, Tom. You got to watch out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, that's just not me. Come on. I've been in L.A. 20 years. Nothing like that has ever happened. All right. Well, you tell those guys to make sure they show for you around all the time. All right, Rich. Blow me up. Here you go, baby. Do a Nick Nolte for God's sake. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. It's the Tom Likas Show coming to you from Hollywood at 1 800 5800 Tom. In case you're just doing it again, this entire segment began. With a story from Star Magazine that claims that Sarah Jessica Parker's husband, Matthew Broderick, has been sneaking off for what they call hot trysts with a stunning redhead half his age. Of a perfect couple. How do you feel when a perfect couple is finally exposed? 
<laughs> for what they aren't. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's James on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, James. Uh, Tom, I love you, man. Thank you. Hey, hey my brother uh, was married for about eight years, and they claim that they had the perfect marriage, the perfect kids, uh, the perfect house. Everything was great. I hated going over to his house because it, I knew there was something wrong there. And uh, guess what they're going through right now, Tom? Of course they're going through a divorce. They're going through a divorce. Of course they it's are. The worst, it's the worst divorce I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> they're having each other thrown in jail. They both have restraining orders against each other. Uh, it, it's crazy, Tom. I, I can't believe that, uh, that it lasted that long, to be honest with you. It's, uh, it's insane. I, uh, yeah, well, again, I, I, I really enjoy seeing it. I, I'm human, and um, the more people try to tell me they've got the perfect marriage, perfect relationship, perfect kids, perfect house, perfect honeymoon, perfect everything, the more right. I enjoy it when they fall. It, it's, uh, it, it's going on the highest high for about maybe two months, and then coming and crashing down to your, your complete bottom is what they did. Um, I, they, they were lying throughout their whole their whole marriage. This front, it was a front the whole time, I believe. Yeah, it had to have been. Uh huh. Now, are you married, James? Do you have a girlfriend? Uh, you know what, Tom? I just recently got uh, engaged. Why don't you do that, <laughs> Tom? I've been living with her for about uh, six years now. Why'd you I'm do 30, that? Uh, well, I'm 33 now, and. Uh, you know, we're, we're you're 33, I mean, and your life is over. Is that right? Uh, well, game over, but not life over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right, Tom, I listen to you all the time. I've been listening to you for years and years now. Uh, you've kept me single this long, but it's you know it's time for me to uh, to marry this girl that I love. So all right, we'll, well, we'll see what happens. I'll talk to you in about five years, James. <laughs> Tom, can you take me out with a toilet flush and a biatch? Yes, I can. Yeah, one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. By the way, that web address is Sarah Jessica Parker looks like a horse dot com. Uh. <laughs> if you can't remember the exact wording or whatever, go to blowmeuptom.com and yeah, the, this website will brighten your day. Several photographic examples of why Sarah Jessica Parker looks like a horse. Dot com. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Ed on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Ed. Tom. <laughs> give, me a minute to give, give me a minute to stop laughing. because <laughs> <laughs> It looks like a horse is the best. <laughs> you got, uh, yeah, have you been to the website yet, Ed? Yeah, I'm sitting at the computer. As soon as I stop laughing, I'm going to type it up. <laughs> uh, go to picture. Wait, do it now. Go to picture number six. Uh, okay, sir. Jessica Parker looks like a horse. Well, I, I can talk to you while I'm doing this. All right. Uh, Wow, I, I know when he's I know when he's couples just like this, and actually, it's my ex girlfriend's good friend, and my ex girlfriend always put her friend on the pedestal because she married to a doctor, and they live in a big house, and and they have beautiful kids and all this, and and earlier this week the, the guy got busted for a uh, molestation, sexual oh, molestation, really? He's in jail right now on four million dollars bill. Oh my. Wow! Apparently, he wasn't as happy as she thought. Yeah, you know, you know what's so, and what's so best about it, you know, I, I probably, I probably wouldn't be so, it probably wouldn't be so funny. But I met the guy about six times, and every time I meet him, he he, he gives me this routine like, "Where do I know you from? How do I know you?" You know, come on, dude. He probably <laughs> met you. Now. He probably met you in the little boys' room years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but talking about taking the, taking the rug from underneath you. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, did you get to that picture? Uh, not, Come not, on, not, step it up. Uh, Sarah. Sarah Jessica Parker. Uh, Parker. Looks like, like a horse. horse. Dot com. Thing said number six, huh? Picture number six is the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah. Now, if you go to the page called Feedback, which is really Mailbag, uh-huh. uh, scroll down about two-thirds of the way down to the page and see the other photo there. That's that's also very good. Yeah, go, Ari. All right, take a look at that. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, get a, you'll get a real laugh out of oh. this. What's next? Especially all the <laughs> indignant email from Sarah Jessica Parker fans. <laughs> yeah, I think you're about to get a phone call from her publicist. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was done by her publicist. Oh, <laughs> uh, probably so, probably so. Oh, this number, number two isn't good, is it? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking at her, Tom. <laughs> Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate the call. Yeah. You'll thank me, especially if you're at the office right now. Sarah Jessica Parker looks like a horse dot com. Uh, it's one of those things when you're in the office, you'll want to show it to everybody in the office, and all the women are going to get pissed off. <laughs> but the men are going to love it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Here's Kevin on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. What's happening? Not much, Kevin. Hey, you know what's funny is uh, I don't know how long that website's been around, but I swear it was a good nine years ago. I used to work with a guy that really literally used to get pissed off that she was even on TV at all. No. And he said ex exactly his words were, she looks like a freaking horse. <laughs> 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 well, if you didn't believe she did before, after you visit this website, you'll know it. Yeah, that's, that's the truth. Hey, but uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, I wanted to talk about uh, the whole uh, perfect couple thing. I was uh, I was engaged around the same time, actually, about nine years ago, and um, <clears throat> uh, my ex fiance's best friend, uh, uh, of course, was half of that perfect couple, and uh, you know, by association, I was of course the the the, the her husband's friend. And uh, so I would always hear this crap about how great they were together and how, how, you know, how well he treated her and blah, blah, blah. Well, what my fiancé didn't realize is that he was telling me all of, all of the people that he was screwing around with. And he was cheating on her the whole damn time. <laughs> And so, and and of course, I can't say anything because that's her best friend. So I can't, I can't, you know, that's that's a, a violation of the man code to go and snitch him out. So that's I'm just right. sitting here listening to this crap about how great they are and how I should treat her the way this guy treats his his wife and blah blah blah. And uh, the whole time I'm sitting there going, "Yeah, you want me to treat you like he treats her? Bring your sister over here." <laughs> 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 uh, so uh yeah that was uh you know I, I just had to sit there and take it i couldn't say anything it sucked yeah i i hate i hate when uh anytime i've been in a relationship or married and the person i'm with always tries to throw some other couple in my why can't we be more like them <laughs> yeah, and then later on it's like yeah you want to be more like them <laughs> great Exactly. There's the front door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't live here. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, thank you for that. I appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Chris on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Father. How you doing, sir? Doing great, son. Um, Man, I wish you, you were in my life earlier as I was growing up. I'm a single guy here, and... uh I got stuck, man. Uh, I got married. Why'd you do that? 28. I was listening to the show at the time, man. And uh, as I listened and continued in my marriage, it uh, it really started, started to hit me, man. And uh, back, I, I haven't had uh, any intimacy since uh, 2006 with my wife. And yet, we kind of live this life where she would uh, kind of brag and I kind of go along with it with her friends and stuff oh we got the new truck we got a new boat just got the house I wasn't getting laid and uh, and she's happy she's just fine and all dandy when we go out and party and and happy go lucky but uh, I tell you what all you need to do is get a stripper from Craigslist over your house and the whole world can <laughs> fall apart around you and that's kind of what I did, and I tell you what, it's been a, I think everyone's just shocked right now all around us, and everyone's just, just blown away, but uh, it's opened up the door, actually, to uh, 
a new horizon for my chapter in life, and um, I owe a lot to you, man. Seriously, uh, you've uh, helped me and encouraged me to get my balls back about a lot of stuff, man. I, I love that. Stuff. So thanks, Tom. Seriously. 33 and uh, getting back together, man. Sounds good so, to me. Can you pick me up, Brett Favre style? Brett Favre style. Let's see if we've got that together. Do we have Brett Favre style? <coughs> Yeah, well, we'll pull one together, Brett Favre style. That sounds a lot like Brett, actually. <laughs> I just can't quit football. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Jose is listening to our live stream in Panama City, Panama. Not Panama City, Florida, folks. Panama City, Panama on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom, man. Big followers of fellow of yours. Sorry if I, if I can't express myself very clear, clearly because I, I, my, my first language is Spanish, so I'm going to try to do my best. Uh, first of all, I want to I want to congratulate you on your 20th anniversary, on your recent 20th anniversary. Thank and you. And I hope you have and I hope you have 20 more years of success ahead on your radio talk show, man. Uh, I'm no student of yours because because I've I've learned the hard way. I, I, I've been listening to you for for two months already, and I, I'm 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 amazed to see how how somebody else thinks the same way I do. Because since I was 13 years old, I had to learn the hard way, man. By, by by getting hit and standing up, I know how to treat women. So I, I tell every student out there listening to you, treat women bad, but not bad in a in a way you have to insult them or tell tell them how bitches they are. Sorry if I can't say that word on air. I'm sure you can. You have, yeah, you have to treat them indifferently, as as if you don't care. It doesn't matter how hot they are, because the the hot chicks are usually are usually used to all the attention around them because they know they're hot. But when some guy does not pay any attention to her, treats them indifferently as if they don't care, as if they were 100 pounds overweight, man, you have more chances than anyone else around her. And after you get those chances, and after you have the chance to get out with that girl, you bang her hard, you bang her the best way you can, so she always, always remember you. And after you do that, you don't call her, you don't answer her phone, you don't reply her text messages, you do as if it never happened. And if you accidentally bump into her somewhere else, you, you do as if nothing happened, and you'll see this hot-ass chick will be like, what? How does this guy, and I'm so hot, how does this guy doesn't pay any, any attention to me? And she always go back to you because she's going to remember how you get to her fine you give it to her fine dude. You have to always give your best with ladies in bed because they're going to remember you and anybody else, Tom. That's so, right. man. Then you so, kick him to the curb. Yeah, that's how you do, man. So, man, I, and all those listeners, whiners that call you and say, oh, uh, Tom, I don't like your show. I'm not a big listener of yours, and I don't agree with what you say. Man, if you don't agree with what Tom says, why do you call? How, why do you listen to Tom? It's, it's, it, you hate him so much, and he, what he says is so good that it makes you mad, that it makes you want to call again and just tell him how bad he is. But you know he's good in the end because you listen to him. You have to listen to him because you know he's right, and that bothers the ladies when us guys like me few guys like you and i know how they have to be treated oh man jose you certainly seem to have learned a lot i'll tell you what the tom like show